Hi everybody. We're going to pick up right where we left off yesterday in lesson 9.1. Part two of this lesson is going to focus on using a protractor to measure an angle. We learned briefly how to use a protractor before we left school and today we're going to learn a little bit more about it. For today we're going to learn how to read protractors that are already printed on the page like the one you see here on page 88. Once we figure that out then we'll move on to trying to use an actual protractor that you brought home with you. Remember as we're working today to follow along in your own textbook, we're starting on page 88. You should also be following along with a piece of paper or your math notebook next to you so you can write down answers and problems that we try. All right, let's get started. The first thing you should know about a protractor is that it's the tool we use to measure an angle. An angle is measured using a symbol or a tool of measurement called degrees. Let's take a look at what our first box says at the top of the screen. Here it says, an angle measure is a fraction of a full turn. An angle is measured in degrees. For example, a right angle has a measure of 90 degrees. You can write this as 90 with the degree symbol. So let's talk about what that really means. When it says an angle measure is a fraction of a full turn, what that basically means is talking about a circle. So I'm gonna do a really rough sketch off to the side here. But if you think about it, a circle starts at one spot and goes all the way around back to the beginning. That would be one full turn. If I go all the way around that circle, one time, that full turn is made up of 360 degrees. I made a full turn around the circle. When we look at an angle, or that fraction of a full turn, it's going to be a piece or a part of that 360 degrees. So for example, if we talk about that 90 degree angle or a right angle, that would be if I just took this part of the circle and I only went from here to here. That is 90 degrees. 90 degrees is equal to a one quarter turn because it's one out of the four times you could do that to make that full turn of 360 degrees. If I made another 90 degree turn, that would be 180 degrees. If I did it again, and I went from there to there, that would be 270 degrees. And if I close the loop, if I close the circle, that would get me back to 360 degrees. Now, most of the time, you don't have that full circle there to picture when you're looking at an angle. A lot of times, you're just gonna see that piece of a full turn, that angle by itself. So like we've looked at before, those examples like this, where you have two rays that meet up at that common endpoint, which if you remember, is called that vertex. As you can see in our example on the page next to us, we have an angle that looks similar to that. When you have an angle by itself, you can use a protractor to help you measure it. And we're gonna take a closer look at that now. So, as you can see here, we have angle C, A, B, with A at the vertex. To measure it, we would lay a protractor down on top of it, just like you see off to the right side. There's a couple important things you need to know about a protractor. Let's talk about the parts. The first thing you should know about a protractor is that there are two bases to it. There's the actual physical base, that's like the edge of the protractor, but then there's a base line that's a little bit above the edge of the protractor. You can see that right here, that very bottom line on the edge of the protractor. The other important part that you need to know about a protractor is the center point. The center point lines up with the 90 degree mark at the top of the protractor. That is gonna be a very important part as well. 
The last part you need to be aware of are the scales. The scales are also really important on a protractor and there are two of them. We're gonna figure out how to use each one when. But for now, I want you to notice that there is an outer scale. Those numbers run along the outside edge of the protractor. For the outer scale, the zero starts on the left side and the 180 is on the right side. The second scale that you'll use is called the inner scale, and just like it sounds, it's found along the inside of the protractor. It's the inner group of numbers. This time, the zero starts on the right, and it comes around with the 180 on the left. The tricky part about the inner scale is that the numbers are backwards. You're reading the numbers in order from right to left, which is backwards from the way we normally do it. Now let's focus on how we know which scale to use. First, when you're measuring an angle, you have to line up the baseline of the protractor on the bottom ray of the angle. So that means that I want this bottom ray of my angle to be lined up with that bottom baseline of the protractor. Not the edge of the protractor, the baseline. The next thing you wanna do, step two, is to place the center of the baseline at the vertex. So that center mark right here that lines up with the 90 degrees, that center has to be right on top of the vertex so that it makes that nice lined up area. Your last step is to decide which scale. Here's the trick I remember. You see that ray we lined up with our baseline? In this case, it's ray AB. Once you line everything up, that arrow on the end is going to point to one of the zeros on the protractor. In this case, it's pointing through this zero over here. That zero is a part of that outside outer scale that we talked about. So that means if it's pointing to that outside scale zero, I'm gonna use the outer scale to measure my angle. Now, once everything is lined up and you've got your baseline lined up with your ray and your vertex at the center point and you've decided which scale to use, now you have to be very, very precise when you read the scale on the protractor. It's not always easy to do. When you look at this scale on our example problem here, you'll see that it gives us a nice line to help us practice. You follow up the angle until you meet the other ray that it meets up with. In this case, ray AC. Now, my line got a little off there, but if you look at the black line, it hits at about the 45 degree mark. It's right halfway between the 40 and the 50. So we would say that this angle measures 45 degrees. Does that make sense so far? We're gonna keep going and try some more examples. In your textbook, let's turn to the next page, page 89. All right, let's look at an example of how to measure an angle using the inner scale. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on this top example. As you can see, we have a new angle here. This angle is called angle DEF. Remember when we name those angles with the outer points? You want the vertex in the middle, angle D, E, F. Let's review our steps to line up a, an angle with a protractor. Step one, get that baseline of the protractor lined up with one of the bottom rays of your angle. Step two, get that vertex lined up right in the center of your protractor at that 90 degree mark. Your last step, we have to figure out which zero our bottom ray is pointing to. So I'm gonna clear my board so we have a nice, clear view of all of that. Once you get those bottom rays lined up with the baseline, remember I'm gonna look at that arrow and see what direction it's pointing to. In this case, it's pointing to this zero, and that zero is on the inner scale, the inside set of numbers. Here's where it gets a little bit tricky. 
Remember when I said the inner scale is backwards? You have to be really careful when you're reading that inner scale, especially if your top ray is going through the middle of two numbers. In this case, it's not too bad because it's hitting exactly on one of our numbers. So let's zoom in. I'm gonna clear my board so we can zoom in nice and close. Because remember, we want to be as precise as possible when reading the protractor. So I'm gonna follow my inner scale from my bottom ray I'm going to follow it up, up, up until I hit that top ray. And in this case, we can see that top ray is hitting that 70 degree mark. So when I record my answer off to the side here, the measure of angle DEF turned out to be exactly 70 degrees. Now let's try some guided learning underneath. Remember, as we work through these problems together, make sure you're writing your answers down in your math notebook or on a separate sheet of paper. Let's start with number 12. For numbers 12 and 13, they're gonna ask us about the fraction of a turn each angle is making. Think about that full circle we talked about at the beginning of our lesson today. Take a look at number 12. My angle started, let's say, at ray B, C. I'm gonna measure from that ray to the next ray. And I'm gonna to try to imagine in my head the rest of that circle. So if I kept it going, it would come all the way around. So what fraction of a turn did we make just from CB to BA? The answer would be a one quarter turn. I only made one turn here out of the four I would have to make to make it all the way back around in a full circle. Now let's think about number 13. Take a look at number 13. They even helped us out by adding this nifty little circle here. Think about where we started. We started at ray QP. Then we went around this circle and stopped at ray QR. So what fraction of a turn did we make with this angle? Pause the video and write your answer down. Then press play and check your answer. Did you try it on your own? All right, let's see if you got it right. If I picture that full circle, I'm gonna switch my color here. If I picture that full circle and I cut it into fourths, how many of the fourths did I turn? One, two, three, because our angle was going around this way. So that means we made a three quarter or three fourths turn around the circle. Now, let's try number 14. They gave us a protractor right here on the page, so we can just practice reading it. They also did some really helpful highlighting for us. Take a look at the measure of angle G, H, K. First, they want us to decide, is the measure of angle G, H, K less than or greater than 90 degrees? Remember, this 90 degree mark it makes that perfect corner. It looks to me like our angle GHK is bigger than 90 degrees. One of the reasons we wanna ask ourselves this question is to make sure we're using the right scale. If I know that my angle is bigger than 90 degrees, then the number I get when I measure it should also be bigger than 90 degrees. Now, let's figure out which scale we should use using that baseline arrow trick. Remember earlier I said once you line up your baseline with your bottom ray, it will point to the zero of the scale that you should use. So let's look. Here's my baseline lined up. The arrow is pointing to this zero, which is on the inner scale. 
they did us a favor and already highlighted that inside scale for us. Remember, the inner scale is tricky because the numbers are backwards compared to what we're used to. Now that we know our angle should measure greater than 90 degrees and we're using our inner scale to measure it, let's zoom in so we can be super precise. I'm going to follow up that inner scale from the zero until I run into my other ray on my angle. Now, here's where it gets tricky. The ray of my angle, ray HG, it falls in between two numbers. A lot of students want to say that this would be 145 degrees. That's because it's going past the 140 mark. But remember the numbers are backwards, so this ray is between 130 and 140. So it doesn't make sense for our measurement to be 145 degrees. The answer that would make sense is about halfway between 130 and 140 is 135 degrees. Now let's ask ourselves, is that measurement greater than 90 degrees? Yes, it is. Did we use our inner scale to measure that angle? Yes, we did. Great job so far. Let's look at some more examples on the next page. Turn in your textbook to page 90. Let's try some more practice problems to make sure we really understand how to read a protractor. Let's start with number 15. Here we have the measure of angle J, K, L. Here it is on the protractor already lined up for you along the baseline and along that center point. Pause the video and I want you to answer these three questions in your notebook. First, look at angle JKL and ask yourself, is the measure of JKL less than or greater than 90 degrees, that right angle? Once you decide that, use our trick with the arrows. Is your base ray pointing to the outside scale zero or the inside scale zero? Once you decide that, see if you can figure out what measure JKL is. Once you write down your answers, you can press play on the video to check to see if you are correct. Did you try it on your own? All right, let's check your answers. The first question you had to think about was, is the measure of angle JKL less than or greater than 90 degrees? Well, here's the 90 degree mark. Let's see what happens when we look at angle JKL. Hmm, it seems like our angle is greater than 90 degrees. So for your first answer, you should have put the measure of angle JKL is greater than 90 degrees. Next, you were supposed to ask yourself which zero our base ray was pointing to. Our base ray was ray KL. Once you find that base ray, you look at that arrow and see which zero it's pointing to. In this case, it was pointing to our outside zero. That means you had to use your outer scale to find the measurements of this angle. Once you figure out which scale you're using, you follow up on that scale until you run into your other ray. In this case, ray KJ, we run into it at about the 110 degree mark on our protractor using that outside scale. So when your answer is all written down, you should have that the measure of angle JKL is 110 degrees. Double check, is that a greater measurement than 90 degrees? Yes, it is. So we did that problem correctly. Next up, let's look at problems 16 and 17. These are great problems to practice because sometimes you have to turn the protractor on a page to find that baseline ray to line up with the baseline of your protractor. Angles don't always match up perfectly on the page the way you want them to. So sometimes you have to turn your paper or turn your protractor to make it work. So what we'll have to do is rotate our papers in order to look at this angle correctly. Let's go through our steps together. First, did this protractor line up the baseline ray with the base of the protractor? 
they did. Did they also line up that vertex with the center point at the 90 degree mark? They did. Now, I'm going to ask myself, does this angle look like it's greater than or less than 90 degrees? Hmm. That definitely looks like it is less than 90 degrees. So I should remember that when I get my answer to check to make sure those two make sense. Now let's use our baseline ray trick to figure out which scale we're going to use. My baseline ray is lined up right here. I see my arrow and it is pointing to the outside scale zero. That means I'm gonna follow up along that outside scale until I hit my next ray of my angle. In this case, it looks like my top ray is lining up at about 40 degrees. Now let's double check. Is 40 degrees less than 90 degrees? Yes, it is. Now that I asked myself all of those questions, I can write down that my final answer for the measure of angle E is 40 degrees. Now, I want you to turn your textbook page and try to find the measure of angle F for number 17 by yourself. Pause the video now and try it. Once you've tried it on your own, press play and check your answer. Did you try it on your own? All right, let's check our answers. I'm gonna start by turning my paper so I'm facing the protractor the right way. I'm gonna run through my steps. First, is my angle greater or less than 90 degrees? That looks a lot bigger than 90 degrees to me. So that means my angle measurement should also be bigger than 90 degrees. Now it's time to use my baseline ray trick. My baseline is here. It's pointing to the inside zero. That means I'm gonna use my inside scale. Now I have to remember to count backwards from right to left. I follow that inside scale up until I get to the next ray. Now I have to remember it's between two numbers, so I have to make sure I pay attention to which is which. It's between 120 and it's between 130. It looks to me that it's about 125 degrees. Double check and ask yourself, is that measurement greater than 90 degrees? Yes, it is. So, for your final answer, when you turn your paper back over and we figure out the measure of angle F here, we decided that the measurement was 125 degrees. Mathematicians are supposed to be precise. So, you want to make sure you're as close to 125 degrees as you can be. If you are about two degrees off, so maybe two degrees less than that, or two degrees more than that, that's okay. But you want to be as close as possible. All right, to end today's lesson, we are going to learn two more really important vocabulary words. For numbers 16 and 17, we figured out the measurement of two angles. For 17, we learned that the measure of angle F was 125 degrees. Over here, the measurement of angle E was, we said, about 40 degrees. The two new vocabulary words we're going to learn today are acute angles and obtuse angles. The way I like to remember it is this way. Our definition says an angle with a measure less than 90 degrees is acute angle. I remember that by thinking acute angles are little teeny tiny cuties. So when I say it in my head, I think, oh, that's a cute angle. It's little and small and less than 90 degrees. Obtuse angles are measures that are greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. So our measure of angle F, that angle was bigger than 90, but it's less than 180 degrees. 180 degrees is a straight line. So. Acute angles are teeny tiny and less than 90, they're cuties. Obtuse angles are bigger than 90, but less than 180. So boys and girls, to review, 
We learned how to measure with a protractor today. You want to make sure that you're lining up the base ray of your angle with the baseline of the protractor. You want to make sure your vertex is lined up with the center point of your protractor, which falls at about the 90 degree mark. Then the trick is to figure out which scale you're using. If the base ray arrow is pointing to the outside zero, use the outside scale. If the base ray is pointing to the inside zero, use the inner scale. Just remember with that inner scale that the numbers are reading backwards. We also learned about different types of angles and what they're called. If you have a teeny tiny angle that's less than 90 degrees, it's acute or a cutie. If you have a perfect corner, a 90 degree angle, that is called a right angle. If you have an angle that's bigger than 90 degrees, but less than 180, that's obtuse. And if you have an angle that's exactly a straight line or 180 degrees, that is actually called a straight angle, which is easy to remember. That's it for our lesson today, boys and girls. Check your to-do list or your lesson plan for today to see what your next step is. You're going to try to practice some of these skills in your workbook page. Don't forget to send me a picture of your workbook pages and your lesson notes from today. And you can check your workbook with the answer key posted on Google Classroom. Great work.